and welcome to Life is Spiritual presents the Erica documentary. My name is Baba Zion and once again I'm here with my beautiful gorgeous wife. Erica Mukisa Kimani aka Mama Maisha O Mami Zion and Zef Zefanaya. Mama Zef glowing. <laughs> wow. Thank you. <laughs> I thank God for you. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. I thank God for you also. <laughs> <laughs> amen. Amen. Yeah. And this is number 33. Yes. By Ebenezer. the grace of God. Ebenezer. Grace of God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so we just thank God for where the Lord has brought us. And we've been discussing altars. Yeah. And because the topic is so wide, we're at altars number three. 33. Yes, part 33. Yeah. And so before we begin, as usual, start with a word of prayer. Amen. So. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, whose we are and whom we serve, we honor you, we glorify you. We give thanks for the opportunity to share your word, to be rescued from this world of sin, which is already judged and is passing away. We pray, mighty Father, that Jesus Christ may be glorified in this documentary, as in all of them. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would have the dominion over the course of this discussion so that the result is edification, encouragement, the building up of the saints, the empowerment of the saints, inspiring the saints. May the blood of Jesus cover them, spirit, soul, and body. There shall no evil befall them. Neither shall any plague come near their dwelling. We thank you that confusion is removed and replaced with clarity of thought and firm foundation in Christ Jesus with a thorough understanding of who they are and what their assignment is in this life. For God is not the author of confusion. So we honor you, mighty Father. We glorify you. May this broadcast be under the auspices of your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. 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 Yeah, so we are continuing with altars. But there is a question that people have been asking. that uh, How should we construct an altar? Or how do we build an altar? And where do we build an altar? Right. I feel we should answer that before I continue. Um, testifying. Amen. I think an altar is first and foremost, you are the altar. Remember the word of God says that God did not delight or does not desire to dwell in temples made by hands. Mm. So if your human body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, then you yourself or your body altar. is the altar. Now, in the Old Testament, when men built altars unto the Lord, they were to take stones without taking a, a chisel or a tool to it. Because if they take a tool to it, the Bible says you have defiled it. But you were to take stones as they are and pile them one on top of the other such a way that there are no stairs. Because if you make an altar unto the Lord with stairs, the Bible says that if you ascend up the altar with stairs, that means that your nakedness will be seen. So that's what really revealed that in the kingdom of darkness, the altars have stairs. And those altars, when the priest ascends, their nakedness can be seen. And so that's why when you look at the pyramid, you are seeing an altar with stairs. But God gave specific instructions that when you make your altar unto him, it should not have stairs. Now, in the New Testament, you're not building an altar using stones. <laughs> you're building an altar with your lifestyle. Yes. Every time you go to your prayer closet and you pray in that place, that place becomes an altar. Your altar. Your the, home can also be an altar. Your whole house can become an altar because of the activity that takes place in that, in that place. If you have consecrated your home unto the Lord 
and maybe you know you can anoint your home you can anoint different places in your home the oil represents the holy spirit you just pray over the oil you buy you know ordinary oil maybe olive oil from the supermarket or something and then you pray over it and because the oil represents is a representation of the spirit of god you you put it around your home as a, as a consecration you are sanctifying your home unto the lord yeah. it's an outward sign of a spiritual reality so that home becomes your altar. So your altar is not necessarily a pile of stones. And it's definitely not stairs. And it's definitely not a pyramid. <laughs> mm. Amen. So yeah. that lifestyle of consistent consecration, that turns your location into an altar. And you yourself are a tabernacle unto the Lord, a temple yes. to the Lord. And one thing about prayer you're not laboring in vain it may appear like it's taking a while for your prayer to be answered but when you start getting results you will not regret the fact that you invested your time in prayer i'll give an example there is a pastor who was doing well in the business sector and, and the enemy did not like that so he sent me to attack this pastor we had never met with that pastor before but uh, they have a screen in the kingdom of darkness where they pull the image of somebody they want to attack. They study that person's life and then they send you to attack the person. With this pastor, they were not able to study him so much. Of course, they, they would look at the children and the wife, but beyond that, they did not know how they could attack him. So they sent me. He was coming to Ginger for the first time and he was coming to wed to wed a couple so they told me that you find time and then intro because your parents are church members so you can introduce yourself to him and then as you're interacting try as much as possible to screen or to scan him and see where we can find any loophole or any weakness mm. in this man so i go to the church and when I went when I went to that church, he was wedding, and he even came with his wife. He introduced the wife to the congregation, and uh, the wedding ceremony went on very smoothly. But you know, pastors after the service, the people who come to greet, mm. not everybody who comes to greet is actually a saint or a believer. Some people come on missions, so mm. I saw him in church, but when I went to greet him, I could not see him. I could not see him and I got so puzzled. I would go like uh, the other people. I would by bypass him and, and talk to other people instead. Then the person I'm looking for, I'm not seeing him. And guess what? I went to the, as I'm getting out of the hall, going to the wedding reception, I'm hoping that he's also going to come at the wedding reception. So because i had i hadn't even planned to go to the wedding reception i start asking uh excuse me yes uh do you know where the wedding reception is going to be and they direct me to the gardens and he say hi how are you i said i'm fine what's your name i, I told him my name is erica and then i asked him and what's your name and they said, I am Titus. So I go, as I get out of the wedding, now I'm going to wedding reception. They ask me, my masters ask me, have you been able to track the person that we are uh, tracking? I said, no, I failed. But somebody has directed me to the reception. And they said, who directed you to the reception? I said, I'm going to the reception. But somebody called Titus directed me to the reception. And they said... <laughs> That man is powerful. It's the same guy that you're looking for that directed you to the reception. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I had no idea I was talking to him. I got confused. Totally confused. You had been sent on a mission by... For him. By for Satan. Satan himself. Yes. I'm, I was supposed to find a loophole in the man's life so that I, we can now back on that to destroy him. But now... I looked for him. I could not see him. I was just bypassing him and, and talking to other people. So I'm getting out and he's also getting out. And then he directs me to the reception, but he asked me for my name. So I tell him Erica and then he tells me his, his Titus and he's the one we are looking for. <laughs> <laughs> so I find out, oh, 
I was looking for the same guy and he just directed me to the wedding re reception. So they told me, cancel that mission. That guy is powerful. He's going to destroy you. So I canceled the mission and they decided to send stronger people than me. Then the other time, and that's now that's when I started now realizing that there are some people who are too powerful because sometimes I would be sent to homes. I would be sent to people's homes to go and attack them. But there are some homes I would I would totally miss. I would not access them. There are some places I would not even go close because I would find fire and angels surrounding those homes because they are prayerful. They have a prayerful lifestyle. So such places are not easy to access. Some restaurants, some businesses I would be sent to attack, but I could not have a, a, a successful you know, mission because the owner of that place is a prayerful person. Uh, an example is there's a man he was married to a prayerful woman. He he was not born again. Okay, he would he wouldn't he had nothing about, about against Christians, mm. but he was not a religious person. He didn't value those things. Yes, he was a business person. So the wife was born again and she was raising the children in a Christian way. Mm. Now this man, because of the wife's prayers, he started flourishing in the business uh, sector. And there were competitors, and those people were contacting my grandmother for power, for witchcraft. And I remember his neighbor, the first time he came, they sacrificed a goat, and grandmother was telling her that him, that as the goat is being consumed by the spirits, how you know that the spirits are consuming that goat once it has been sacrificed, the maggots will just come and feed on it and leave the bones. Instantly. Instantly, yes, after they've sacrificed. So the sacrifice was good. And the grandmother told the, the man that as the maggots have consumed that sacrifice, that is how you're going to get clients. You will even be sending away some the way you could not even count the maggots. And that, that location where they were was a, a good location next to the busy market. So there you expect to find many customers. So this guy was given charms and he said that he, everything is okay apart from one person that takes all the customers. And that is the man I'm talking about. The one who is married to a prayerful woman. So grandmother said, ah, that one, just leave him to us. We'll deal, we'll deal with him. So my grandmother sent my auntie, without telling me, to go and get change, like pretend like he needs to exchange money so that the man can give him, uh, like you have one paper note, but you want somebody to give you other small notes that are equal to the note that you have. So my auntie di did that. She went to the store. And when she went to the store, this time the man had not worked. The woman was in the store. My auntie doesn't know why, instead of getting the change, she ended up buying things. She bought Omo, she bought mm -hmm. soap, she bought things that she... Omo, she, Omo, uh, for uh, it's our a powdered Western. soap. Yeah, it's a detergent. Yes, it's a detergent. She bought toilet paper. She bought <laughs> things that are not... Easy. She just went shopping. Yeah, she just in went shopping. Instead of getting change so that she could they take the cash and, and bewitch the money. She just supported She just the, She the ended business. up supporting the business. And she came back with nothing, no money. <laughs> then grandmother got annoyed. So she said, how can you be so weak and foolish? You know, this, mm. this girl is going to challenge you. I'm going to send my granddaughter. Then I, I asked, what, what has she felt to do? They did not tell me. Then grandmother called me and she told me, Erica, I want you to go and do this for me. You see that man that the other gentleman was talking about? I said, yes. She said, I want you to go and, and ask him to exchange some money for you. And then you bring that money. We want to bewitch him so that our client gets customers. I said, ah, done deal. I've never failed. Mm -hmm. So I ran to the store. When I went to the store... <laughs> Mm -hmm. again that day it was now like about three days after my auntie had gone mm -hmm. now there again i did not find the man i found the wife so when i found the wife in the store one thing i observed this woman um she used to listen to uh, christian stations on a radio mm -hmm. she had a small radio so she would 
tune a Christian station and put the loudest volume. <laughs> and then at lunch time, they had lunch hour mm-hmm. where it was time to pray. She would be praying and selling things to people, but she's praying. Sometimes she would be praying in the spirit, but she's selling. So me, I had no idea that this woman is is the reason as to why my auntie failed in the previous mission. Mm-hmm. So I I cross the road, I go straight to the to the store, and she looks at me and says, "How are you?" And I said, I'm fine. So instead of saying, please assist me with change, because the woman was so kind. They mm. said, I just ended up buying things I don't even need. Mm. I bought mandazi. I bought samosa, chapati. Mm-hmm. I just bought things to, to things for eating. And I was not even interested in the, those things. So I carried everything I bought to my grandmother. <laughs> and my grandmother said, I, I know I have known today that I have weaklings. <laughs> I thought I was training strong people and only to find out that you're all weak and useless. And she said and my auntie said, Wait, who did you find at the store? I said the wife. Then auntie's like, that's the reason. Mm. That woman is prayerful. The man is not prayerful. And I don't know why the days we go there we find the woman in the store. <laughs> you know? So we <laughs> failed. <laughs> Because there's no way you can bewitch the mandazi. It's coming from another person, but they are selling it through this one and she gets a discount. We wanted the money so that we can we can bewitch the lady's income. And, and she she fails to get customers the way she's been getting. And she makes losses in her business. And then mm. she shuts down that store. We were not interested in the products that she was selling. We wanted a the... point of contact, which was the money, to exchange with her mm-hmm. so that we can steal her blessing. We can steal the blessing. But now we fail to do that because the woman was praying. And the man... The man is the man was surviving, not knowing that it's the wife's prayers that are helping him to survive and thrive in the business. And and now the meeting, the next meeting was how do we separate the two? So just know if you're in a marriage that is working and things are doing well, just know that the enemy will want to to separate that marriage because uh, there's because of that blessing that he wants to steal. So this man, my grandmother started strategizing on how she could break this union. And now they were looking at the man's weakness because the man is not saved and the woman is saved. So they were like, we leave the woman alone. Let us try to target the man. If we can, if we can get this man to fall in love with another woman, then there we can lure him into weakening the woman's uh, prayer life because now the woman will be full of bitterness. After all that we have gone through together and, and all that, this is how you're paying me. So if, if you're in a marriage and it's doing well, yes, thank God, but keep that marriage and keep that business and everything that God has given you in prayer. Because if this woman reduces on the prayer, on the prayerful lifestyle, that is the end of their marriage and their business and their income. And it's going to affect the children. So uh, my grandmother was discussing that, but the woman was too hot. That woman was too hot. It's not easy even to bring the man down because she's not only praying for the business, Mm. she's also praying for the family. So Mm. they were thinking on how they can successfully do it. But the man is covered because of the woman's prayer. He's not even saved. He's not saved. (laughs) But the prayers are covering him. So Uh even your children, they may not be saved, but you can decide to to pray, you know, and Over cover them, them and, and pray that God God will lead them to the right people that will lead them to Christ. Her prayer altar was on fire. It was on fire. And now they wanted to see how they can put it down. You see, that's why the priestly commandment is in Leviticus chapter 6. He said, the yeah. fire upon the altar should ever be burning. Yes. It shall not go out. out. Look at Exodus chapter 20, verse 24. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me. God is speaking here to the children of Israel. He said, an altar of earth thou shalt make unto me and shall sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings and thy peace offerings, thy sheep and thine oxen. In all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee, watch this, 
and I will bless thee. So where does the blessing take place? Wow. At the, the altar. altar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewn stone. In other words, you won't cultivate or you won't attempt to shape that stone. For if you lift up your tool upon it, you have polluted it. Then he says in verse 26, Neither shalt thou go up by steps unto mine altar, that thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. So you see, the altar of the Lord in the Old Testament was just built on the ground, on the surface level. Then you pile stones, enough okay. stones for it to have at least a, a, a flat surface, maybe like a, a square or a rectangle, flat surface, and then you can put your your burnt sacrifices, your burnt offerings, your peace offerings, your sheep, your oxen on top of that, and then, you know, and, and, and burn it like that. But it was not supposed to have stairs. That's why when I'm showing you the dollar bill, the pyramid, the pyramids of Giza, those are altars. That's the throne and altar of Lucifer. Notice that it has stairs. Why? Because it is an altar of nakedness. Yeah. That's why when it comes to Satan, fornication and sexual immorality, nakedness, being disrobed of your garment of righteousness is such a big deal. It's primal to them. It's a primary area of activity yes. to strip you. Satan desires to strip you of your garment of righteousness. Now, if your altar goes cold, that means another altar that is burning is drawing away from yeah. the power of your altar. It's mm -hmm. a battle of altars. Really. Yes. And uh, when my when my mom found out that what had been affecting us was witchcraft, she intensified on prayer. She mobilized mm. intercessors. And as a result, everything that my grandmother had sent backfired on her, including mm. the pregnancy. I told you my mom was pregnant for 10 years. She even shares in her testimony what she went through. Pregnant, not with a child. Please remind us, what did she, what did your grandmother, ah, oh, Dronia was wicked. My what did she do to, to bewitch my to mom? Bewitch, yeah. She what got a the... water plant that is in form, the roots are in form of a uterus, the shape of a uterus. And she buried, and she, I mean, planted this water plant uh, in, in the backyard of her compound. And, you know, it, when it grows, it, it, it has, it's like the way the passion fruit is, it, mm. it, 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 like, it spreads. It, it's, it coils and spreads. Yes. Uh -huh. So she declared that as it is spreading, that is how the fibroids will spread on her uterus. Oh. And then she 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 got <laughs> my grandmother was so wicked. No, oh, witchcraft is wicked. It will yeah. make anyone who practices it wicked. Yes, and she said that as it the root expands, that mm. is how her uterus will expand, carrying nothing but fibroids. So she kept on watering that plant every morning. That's the dedication she had, watering it every morning. Water, because it's a water plant, so it has to be in water all the time. So mm. she would water it, declaring, making her declarations. And indeed, my mom would feel like, you know how you, f when when the wind blows and those leaves are, and those leaves are moving, my mother would feel movements in her stomach, like somebody who has a baby. And she was pregnant and she would even sometimes the pain would be so much that she would feel like climbing even the walls because of the pain. Oh. Yeah, so it got to a point where the doctors suggested that they take out the uterus and my mother wanted to have more children. So she, she kept on holding on. But when they mentioned to her that it's at a stage where she can get cancer. She surrendered and she said, okay, you can take out the uterus. But even when they took out the uterus, it didn't help. It didn't help. She remained pregnant. Because so, the solution was not physical, it was spiritual. spiritual. And a yeah. lot of people are facing that. Yeah. So now, uh, when we prayed, when we prayed, uh, my, my, my mom, the stomach went back. And my grandmother got pregnant in her old age. She could not handle the pain that my mother was. Uh, in in other words, it wasn't a pregnancy. It was a reversal of what was inside my your mom. mom. Going to 
to my grandmother. It was transferred to your grandmother. And the pain that my mom was experiencing is the pain that my grandmother started experiencing. The stomach swelling to the point of her coming to repent and confess to my mom and bless her. She said, let me bless you. You see, at the altar, God can cause your enemy to bless you like Balaam. <laughs> <laughs> God can cause your enemy to bless you. They have come to curse and they get to where you are and they say, may God bless you. Surely you're blessed beyond the curse. And yet their initial plan was to come and finish you. So it's not something you should take lightly. It is something you should take seriously because life is spiritual. So my mom finds out that, eh, hey, I've been suffering. Not and if, when they removed her uterus, the enemy is so bad. My grandmother told her, "You will have many children. How can a woman whose uterus has been taken out have many children?" No, she's a liar. She's a liar. You know they are <laughs> mocking her. The enemy is good at mocking. Now look at this, Isaiah forty-four verse twenty-four. Mm. Thus says the Lord, thy redeemer, yeah, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that makes all things, that stretches forth the heavens alone, that spreads abroad the earth by myself, that frustrates the tokens of the liars. Yes. And makes diviners mad. Uh -huh. Meaning that diviners lose their minds. Yes. He makes diviners lose their minds. Yeah. That turns wise men backward because they think that this witchcraft that they're using is wisdom. Oh, yes. But that's earthly wisdom or it's soulish wisdom or it's devilish wisdom. Yeah. He said, turns wise men backward and makes their knowledge foolish. Yes. Now watch this. That confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsel of his messengers. That says to Jerusalem, which is the body of Christ, the church, Thou shalt be inhabited, and the cities of Judah you shall be built, and I will raise up the decayed places thereof. So you see, the tokens of the liars, because over every altar there's a token. Yeah. Right? Like for this altar at Adronia's house where she was cursing your mother, the token she, was the water plant. And she sacrificed chicken on it. And uh -huh. when we were praying for that, my mom... That that chicken also, the blood when, is a sacrifice. When we were the praying payment. for my mom, they, you know how a chicken uh, makes sound when they are slaughtering it? Mm -hmm. That's the sound that came from my mom's stomach. During deliverance. During deliverance. So they were praying for her and they heard the sound... The sound of the chicken coming from my mom's stomach and the stomach went flat... And my grandmother got pregnant. Not her stomach. So mom's stomach went, went down. Grandmother. Grandmother's stomach went down. And that's out. what killed my grandmother. But I thank God, towards the end of her life, she called me and asked me for forgiveness. She asked my mother for forgiveness. And she accepted Jesus to be her personal Lord and Savior. But we didn't know how to pray for her because she was into deep covenants. Of course. She would even turn into things uh, when they tried to pray for her. It her covenants were so so deep so deep and yes. imagine if she had if she had been delivered the amount of information she would have given wow so you see he frustrates the tokens of the liars that token the blood of a chicken and now the blood at the altar provides the energy because in the spirit realm the blood is the currency yes the blood supplies the power yeah that is required, the life force, because they don't have any life force of their own. So the man must provide a life force. Mm. And you can take that life force from the things that God has given life. God gave life to the chicken, but not to the demon. Yeah. So the demon has to get it from somewhere. So you have to steal it from the chicken, chicken and transfer it over to this demon. So now this demon can ride on that energy. To come and... And, 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 and do yeah. evil. It's an evil type of wisdom. This is why, and as this thing is exposed, the church will put witchcraft firmly under their feet. Yeah. This thing will be exposed. This thing will spread all over the world. This information will spread all over the world. And that's how the kingdom of darkness will come down because as people become more aware of the realities of this existence and their advantage in the Lord Jesus, uh, the devil's done. Yeah, and the hurting bit of it is uh, when my grandmother died, mm -hmm. my auntie was not willing to uh, stop 
witchcraft and she wanted to have everything that my grandmother had including my dad's inheritance which was the land that his dad left for him mm. so she started now from where my grandmother stopped and she started sending witchcraft to us and my parents started losing i mean making me- mega losses mm. to the point of failing to stay in town to longing to go to the village to survive and my mom because she knew it was spiritual no matter what she went through she intensified on prayer she mobilized intercessors and uh, they 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 were being led to to go to my auntie and tell her it's time we want to come back to our land and my auntie went to a witch doctor and started performing witchcraft and she wanted my mom to go blind because when my mom goes blind she will be at her masses she will be pretending like she's taking care of her yet she wants to finish her because she knows my mother is the pillar of the family through prayer just like mm-hmm. the other woman was holding the family the husband and the children and their business in prayer so my mom was that pillar in every family there is that pillar there is that person who is holding it in prayer you know so uh when my mom's eye condition became bad she still continued in prayer little did she know that this time god is going to come through for her and my auntie i don't even celebrate but she lost her sight instead and my mother did not know what she was doing we were praying and trusting god for my mother not to lose her sight yet god is at work the other side whoever is responsible is going to be held accountable wow. so my auntie mm-hmm. lost her sight and she started fidgeting we found out she had been getting my clothes my hair my nails and she had piled them in a bottle and on top of the bottle they they had put a skin of an animal and and mm-hmm. tied with a rubber and she had put charms and buried at the entry of the house Oh. So she had buried all my blessings, everything for Erica, photos, uh, my clothes, she would cut, she would cut uh, pieces of clothes. That was the point of contact. Yes, and every time she would wake up in the morning, she made it upon herself to make evil declarations about my life. And me, I was falling sick while my mother was losing her sight. That's so an evil it's form evil, of wisdom. That's an evil type yeah but now through prayer when she lost her sight she went through to different witch doctors they say this kind of witchcraft cannot be reversed when they were giving it to you they told you if you misuse it it's going to come back to you and it can't be reversed mm. then she went to a hospital they said your eyes are blind beyond repair there's nothing we can do to fix your eyes and then now she goes to the pastors they tell her you have to confess to the person that you were trying to hurt mm-hmm. so she comes to my mom mm. blind they drive her to my mom and she confesses i wanted you blind i wanted to take your land and i'm not the only one who was bewitching your daughter mm. i put this under in the, at the entry of the house erica's everything i had held all her blessings so i never wanted her to amount to anything because when i look at her i see her star is bright so i wanted to to dim every possible light on her life and please help me bring my eyesight back my mom said i did not take it so i cannot <laughs> bring it but i'll pray for god's grace on your life if god pardons you he can restore your sight but i have no hand in you losing your sight like you had a hand in my eye issues so that's when my mom my mom started now recovering in fact we we even treated her recently mm. now she's normal she her eyesight is okay yeah by the grace of god but when my auntie you said in the scripture that the bible says that he causes diviners to lose their mind mm-hmm. to run mad to run mad after some time she ran mad and she started conf- you know a mad person who says hey i bewitch them and then she laughs I had finished them then she laughs she keeps quiet then she she says things she starts confessing and talking by herself 
you know mm-hmm. i wanted to finish her eye her eyes and mm-hmm. then she keeps quiet you know like that until the time she died she was mad so the scripture is very 100% correct mad it, meaning that she had lost her, her mind for mind. our friends in the western world yes mm-hmm. she had lost her mind and she died miserably so the things of darkness the enemy promises so much but it's a lie he's a liar you know the tokens of the liar as you've been talking in fact if you can reread that scripture again it makes sense to me mhm thus said the lord thy redeemer mm-hmm. he that formed thee from the womb i am the lord that makes all things yeah. that stretches forth the heavens alone mm-hmm. that spreads abroad the earth by myself yes. that frustrates the tokens of, of the, the liars, liars and makes diviners mad Bad. that turns wise men backward wow. and makes their knowledge foolish mm. so you see in the end all that knowledge they thought they had that they were trying to use against your mother so that the end result is usually it's usually covetousness yes. the end result is usually that you know if if she was not a prayerful woman they hey. would have taken everything from her yeah. and this is the thing that happens to the average person and you'll try to explain these things to the average person but in their arrogance and their pride they'll tell you that you're imagining things mm-hmm. but after they've been hit that's they'll come they back come. And they say, <laughs> you see pray for us when you were say, talking about this we thought you, you didn't understand but now i'm going through what you said <laughs> yeah i've had that there's there's a pastor who came to silence me and he told me that i'm glorifying the devil i should <laughs> never 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 make mention of whatever i went through in public <laughs> then as he's uh, trying to silence me and convincing every pastor he knew not to work with me he finds out that the daughter is under attack they took the daughter to hospital the doc- the daughter's back had collapsed mm-hmm. so she was urinating using a catheter she went to school she was very healthy she cannot move they are just changing her she cannot do anything for herself they went to hospital they can't find the cause nothing mm-hmm. when they start praying the girl becomes strong she starts kicking all of them mm-hmm. yeah that's the only time she can do anything for herself mm. beating them so now <laughs> he remembers this girl that he's fighting and this girl seems to have the solution to her pro- to his problem and then they they carry the girl to us and then we start praying the girl is kicking kicking and doing all that later they find out the daughter was a devil worshipper she had caused the sister to be barren she had made the dad's business collapse mm-hmm. the dad was a publisher so no more business no more customers mm-hmm. and the thing is almost collapsing and he has debts mm-hmm. so uh, i was asking myself now as he plunges deeper into depression because of the loss of everything in his life yes and as the sadness and the anger the grief confusion continues she's growing stronger yes and the girl got delivered so she started saying she was a devil worshiper so i was asking myself is he going to silence her also oh blood is thicker than water <laughs> i was thinking <laughs> about it or the demon in her is growing stronger no she mm. she got delivered mm. and she started testifying Mm. Her, no, no no I was saying by the time she was bewitching that demon in her was, was growing stronger, stronger as the human beings are suffering. Yes. For now she's delivered and pastor has been silencing me and now the daughter is testifying. So I was like is she also going to be silenced or oh, blood is thicker than water. <laughs> so <laughs> but she was not silenced and I was not silenced either. So instead he now started uh, mobilizing support for us and, and introducing us before some pastors that he knew <laughs> <laughs> to help other people because people take these spiritual matters lightly but life is spiritual there's no way we can e- escape the fact that life is spiritual mm. everybody has been a- a- affected in one way or the other but mm. people have no idea it's just when they find out the bible says you know the truth and the, and truth, the truth shall, shall make set you free, free. Yes. and that's what makes psalms 91 
very meaningful because it says he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide mm. under the shadow of the almighty and they start giving you the the results of of abiding in the secret place the secret place is in that altar every time you're praying you're abiding in the shadow of the almighty and it also says that with your eyes you will see the reward of the wicked in fact if you can read all of it mm-hmm. so that people can understand with your eyes me i have seen i have seen the rewards of the wicked with my eyes although the bible tells us not to celebrate when our mm. enemies are in trouble, we Lest should... the Lord be angry with yes. you and he stop punishing the, them. There's a lady we prayed for. Her uncle had stolen their properties uh, mm. when their father died. And then and then we prayed for her and she won the case. And because of that, the uncle got pressure. Uh, after she won the case, he, had to, he, he was told by the court to pay even for the years that he had been with their properties. Mm. They were not using. So the uncle got pressure and he died. And the girl called me and said, praise God, I thank God that he died. I'm like, no, Don't you're not supposed that. to thank God that somebody <laughs> has died because God does not want us to be that way. But uh, with our eyes, he has promised, we shall see the reward of the wicked. We do not pray back to sender. We mm. pray for God to do his will, you know, for, for the will of God to be done in our lives. We even pray for the sinners to get saved because mm. they also need, they, they, just imagine if they had prayed me dead. I wouldn't be here exposing the enemy. We want those sinners to come out and expose the enemy, to expose his wicked works because mm-hmm. they are all being enslaved and used by the enemy. He's, he doesn't, by the way, you have to know that the enemy has no friend. Even the people that work for him are oppressed and tormented. They're even more tormented by the enemy. My grandmother never saw peace the time she served the enemy. Although she was powerful in the kingdom of darkness, the more the promotion, the more the pain. Mm. So in the kingdom of darkness, no pain, no gain. But in the kingdom of God, the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. He will He'll bless you with a good family, with finances. He'll bless you with God-fearing children. He'll bless you with good friends. You know, there is freedom. There is peace. Mm -hmm. Righteousness, peace, and joy is the kingdom of God. Whereas in the kingdom of darkness, it's the opposite. There is no peace. I serve. I serve the enemy. The Bible says there is no peace for the wicked. He gives his beloved sleep. But the ones that serve the enemy don't sleep. Mm -hmm. How do you sleep when blood, when altars are speaking against you? The people they sacrifice, those are altars. That blood is speaking, is crying out for justice. Mm -hmm. That's why they end up losing their mind. Suffering sleep paralysis. Mm -hmm. Being raped in their dreams. Yes. They are nightmares, tortured. constant nightmares. You've seen things okay. following you in your dream, lions and mm-hmm. animals pursuing you, serpents pursuing you. Yes, you've seen cases of celebrities getting addicted to drugs. Why would somebody with money become a drug addict? Because they try to run away from reality. The reality is their altars speaking against them. For that person to become famous and popular, they killed somebody. There there, there are some destinies that have been destroyed. Oh, yeah. They've been sodomized or they've sodomized somebody or molested somebody. In every celebrity's life, in every celebrity, name them, there's somebody around them who died. Whether it's Jennifer Hudson with her. Kanye West. Yeah. Kanye Kanye West said openly that his mother was a sacrifice. Yeah. And you see now, as the mother, as the body, as the family members are in grief and as the body is rotten, this one is the rising. fans, the fans are gathering and he's rising. Yeah. You know, the amount of power that came from the altar comes as a result of the potency of the sacrifice. He, loved, what, he loved his mother. And what are the accusations? He's mentally not okay. Yeah. When he exposes it, they say he's not, he's not right. Yeah. And the people believe him because they believe, you know, that he's that he's crazy because they don't understand anything about spiritual no, principles. No, it's in the scripture. He they don't understand. He causes diviners mm-hmm. to run mad. Yeah. In fact, because of that divination that he's that he's perpetrating, yeah, he calls he makes diviners mad. 
or insane mm -hmm. that turns wise men backward, makes their knowledge foolish. Eventually, all of, that, all of that fame, all of that garbage, the fuel from the sacrifice runs out eventually and boom, everything collapses and, and goes back to normal. When the truth catches up, it's over. The thing about it is the truth is slow. The lie goes very quickly. The lie goes fast. So people enjoy their 15 minutes of fame. But when the truth catches up, you know, it's like the stroke of midnight in the Cinderella story yes. where the, the magic wears off and she's no longer a princess. She's a maid. She's a housemaid yeah. again, you know. And so the magic wore off. He says that in verse 26, that confirms the word of his servant that performs the counsel of his messengers that says to Jerusalem, thou shalt be inhabited and to the cities of Judah, you shall be built and I will raise up the decayed places thereof. He's speaking of people. He's not just speaking of a city. You are that city. He said a city that's built upon a hill cannot be hid. He says that says to the deep be dry and I will dry up thy rivers. He's talking about the flow of the powers of darkness. He'll dry them up. He says, that says to Cyrus, he is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, thou shalt be built and to the temple, thy foundation shall be laid. In other words, in those days, he was talking about, uh, it was a prophecy about how Cyrus was going to rebuild uh, Jerusalem. But you see, it's the same principle in us, the children of God. Our cities had been destroyed by the enemy. But he's rebuilding those cities. You are a city. You're not just a human being. You're not just an individual. You're not just a, a child of God. You are a city. That's why you don't know how much is at stake when you fall into sin. It means that you opened your gates and foreign things have come into your city. Have you ever flown from one country to another? Mm -hmm. When you arrive at customs, what is customs? They are, they are enforcing the customs and the traditions of that country. Yes. And the laws of that country. Nothing illegal is allowed in, so they'll search your things to make sure that you're not bringing in anything that violates the traditions and the customs and the laws of the people. Yeah. So you should be the same way. You should have customs enforcement in front of your eyes, in front of your ears. Nothing enters into the city that is against the traditions and the customs of the kingdom of God. Mm. Right? Like... Uh, uh, you will read Psalms 91. Yes. But before you, you, you read, my grandmother, with the kind of uh, level she was at in sorcery, there was a witch doctor that was summoned to bewitch my grandmother by her stepson. They were also fighting all the time, fighting for property, fighting for things. So she got tired of, of my, my step uncle. And, and she she started also sending witchcraft. So when he went to uh, a shrine, they told him that this witchcraft is coming from your your stepmom. So he also sent a witch doctor to come and be witch. And the witch doctor said, she seems to be powerful. I have to come at your home and do the cleansing. Then I'll be able to also send uh, witchcraft to backfire on her. Mm -hmm. So uh, this witch doctor... He doesn't know that my grandmother is big on her altar and she's deep and stronger than him. Mm. So instead of going to my step uncle's place, he bypassed the place and went to my grandmother's place. And he started telling my grandmother what they have been doing and <laughs> confessing, uh, confessing everything. everything. Mm -hmm. He had no idea that he's doing that because the altar has pulled him there. To mm. confess, because my grandmother had felt earlier they are sending strange things, and she went to her altar, which was more stronger than the other one, and she summoned whoever is responsible to show up. So that witch doctor shows up, and mm. he confesses, and he even tells her where he's coming from. And my my grandmother finds out that he's coming from a witch known as Budagali, mm -hmm. and Budagali was working with my grandmother. So now there was war there, you know. Mm -hmm. How can you send somebody to come and attack me, yet I, 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 you come also to me for some power? Mm -hmm. So there was a fight there, mm -hmm. but what they decided to do, she teamed up with this witch to finish... Uh, Udagali. No, mm -hmm. to finish my step-uncle. Yeah, so that the blood is not on her, it's on this one that he summoned. Said so now it's going to be easy for me 
to reconcile with you, you have to finish. You have to finish this guy for me, you yourselves, because he sent you to finish me. Then now, just like it was going to be easy for you to finish me, I want you to finish him. I don't have his time. So they finished my uncle, my step uncle, he died. And people were were telling my dad, your mom is responsible for your brother's death. My dad was innocent. He didn't know that the mother could do such. He started defending my started defending my grandmother. He said, "No, my mom is not that wicked. I know she's a herbalist, but she cannot kill anybody." He was defending her because he didn't know what had happened. But now we knew what had happened and grandmother used to scare me a lot that she's powerful i should not expose her if i expose her uh, i'm going to fall into trouble and i was seeing a lot so i started now holding things uh, to myself i was avoiding grandmother but i didn't know why because it got to a point where i was seeing this woman is so is so bad you know but how can you explain to to your dad that your mother is very bad and he you see him defending her in public So how do you come out and say but dad you're defending a wicked woman she you end up being slapped mm. yeah so it's, it's through prayer that god opened my daddy's eyes to realize what the mother was doing and that's why he came out to apologize to people on the mother's behalf and to apologize to everybody that she had wrong and that's why he has allowed me to to share my experience to help people because many people are bound due to lack of knowledge but the bible says that you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free mm-hmm. so you can read uh, psalms 91 so that people can understand the importance of of dwelling in the secret place mm, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty no notice he did not say shall visit once every sunday at church he said shall abide under the shadow of the almighty jesus said abide in me and if my words abide in you you shall ask what you will and it shall be done verse 2 i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him will i trust so there was some participation on your part you opened your mouth to speak and said that the lord is your refuge and your fortress your god in him will you trust verse 3 surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler so that's one spirit right there a fowler sets snares for human beings usually for the clueless ones that have no idea that life is spiritual he sets a snare he sets a trap for them foreseeing that they will fall into the trap So the fowler is a certain kind of spirit that sets traps for the children of God. He said he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. That's one spirit. And from the noise and pestilence, that's another spirit. The noise and pestilence uses a strategy that involves sound, noise, usually information to derail you to introduce doubt and unbelief in the word of God. He said he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler one from the noise and pestilence two he says he'll cover you with his feathers and under his wings shall you trust he said his truth shall be your shield and buckler you see this truth that you're receiving now that you understand why you will not sin because you do not want it's not that you believe that you're holier than anybody even though the lord has made you holy but it's not that you believe you're better than anyone you just understand the rules of the game just refuse to open the door for demons to come and steal your goods it's that simple his truth has become your shield and buckler verse 5 you shall not be afraid for the terror by night that's number 3 that's a that's another kind of spirit called terror by night yeah People this who get that sleep paralysis the they suffer sleep paralysis them, strangling and strangulation you cannot even shout You cannot even say the name Jesus you struggle to to say Jesus people who get mm-hmm. raped by demons mm-hmm. yeah. yeah if you can't say your husbands. if you can't say the name Jesus while well, that terror by night is choking you or sitting on you or what have you paralyzing you even raping think of the name of Jesus just think of it Jesus think Jesus help me that thing will take off that thing will leave you alone yeah. so thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night that's a spirit 
It also sends dreams. It also afflicts. It also uh, frustrates. It also inhibits. Sometimes terror by night can prevent you from sleeping, yet you have an appointment in the morning and then sleep finally comes in and the then morning. You miss. Then you miss your appointment. You see, terror by night has very many strategies. It can frustrate, it can compel, it can it can rape, it can renew covenants, it can open the door for other spirits to enter in. And disorganize. And disorganize or afflict you with a sickness or with a disease. So you shall not be afraid for the terror by night. He said, nor for the arrow that flies by day. That's the fourth, that's another kind of spirit that sends arrows by day. So there are spirits that function at night and there are other spirits that function during the day. There's some spirits that can function during the day or during the night. There's a wide array of spirits, just as there is a wide array, a, array of human beings. Mm. You know, there's all kinds of races and, and tribes and nations and tongues. It's the same way with spirits. There's all kinds of them. You might not find two spirits that look exactly the same. All right? Yeah. So, nor for the arrow that flies by day. This one sends arrows by day. If it hits you, suddenly you find yourself unusually sexually aroused. And you think, oh, my biological clock is ticking. No, 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 no. You were hit <laughs> by an arrow. You were hit by a fiery dart. Yes. He said, he said uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, principalities against powers, powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. He said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, the breastplate of righteousness, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the helmet of salvation, and the shield of faith, wherewith we quench the fiery darts of the devil or of the wicked. So they send fiery darts at you. And those fiery darts, they hit you, all of a sudden you're enraged with anger <laughs> yeah. somebody can do something wrong to you and they'll hit and then said satan will suddenly you know the spirits will suddenly hit you with a fiery dart you'll explode in rage and hit that person one time across the jaw and knock him out cold then he hits his head on the corner of a stool and dies there is a and woman. so satan destroys both your life and his life with yeah. one foul swoop it's called the arrow that flies by day yeah there is a woman who got married and the sister got jealous. Then as the sister was still digesting the fact that she got married, she got pregnant. Mm -hmm. And the sister could not stand it. So what she decided to do, she put a spell on her sister. Because she had access to, to her items, her clothes, her everything. She mm -hmm. put a spell on her. And whenever she would see her husband, she would spit when she was pregnant, she would spit. She would feel like the husband is stinking. She could not even stand to stay in the same room with the husband. But the husband knew spiritual warfare and she brought the lady for deliverance and the lady got delivered. Mm -hmm. But she was shocked to find out that her biological sister had done that to her because she's jealous that she's younger than her and she got married to a loving husband and she's pregnant for the man. Mm -hmm. So these things are there. The arrows are there. The enemy sends those arrows. If you're not prayerful, then they, 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 they get you. But if you're prayerful, there's no way the enemy can access you. Me, I have seen people who pray as a person who was serving in the kingdom of darkness. It's difficult to to get to somebody who's prayerful because of the hedge of protection around their lives, because they are covered in the blood of Jesus, there is fire around a person who's prayerful. When you look at them, you see the fire that you cannot stand. You know, there is this fire, uh, the normal fire, the fire in hell that the sorcerers are used to watching. But there is a certain fire, a consuming fire that destroys the demons in a person's life. That's why sorcerers run away from that person because when they see him, he's consuming their power. The demons are being destroyed. So they cannot stand him. They, they look at him as a threat and they run. When they see the blood, it's not this blood that they are used to seeing. The, the slaughtering of the chicken, the slaughtering of men, the slaughtering of, of birds and animals. No, there's this certain blood that destroys every other covenant that you have done. Every other altar, it is stronger than any sacrifice that a person could have made. 
to, to get to where they are. So when they sense that this blood is stronger, it is consuming my energy. My Because you see, when they are killing somebody, they are taking energies. So mm -hmm. when they see this blood, it takes that stolen energy away from them and it takes it to the people that they stole it from. Mm -hmm. so, they, so it restores. They run. It's a restoring blood. The blood mm -hmm. of Jesus restores. So they run away from that. They don't want to lose what they have stolen. Mm -hmm. You know, so they, they hate the blood of Jesus. They hate the fire, the fire that comes from prayer because mm -hmm. our God is a consuming fire. They hate mm -hmm. that and, and they, they avoid people who are prayerful. So in the same way, we Christians should also avoid becoming equally unyoked with unbelievers. Mm -hmm. You find a pastor is taking a pastor is taking pride in being friends with somebody who is on the satanic shrine all the time, satanic altars all the time. Just because they're famous. Because they want to get the following. Mm -hmm. They want to get uh, influence. They want to get social media influence. So I have to invite uh, I have to invite Kim Kardashian. Instead of preaching to her, I want her to help me influence people come to my church. So because I'll even pretend. Because it's all about the tithes and, and offerings. It's, yes. not about, it's not about the souls of men it's being changed. It's called customer care preaching. You give, the, you give the people what will excite them. Now church has become a place for entertainment. You can even bring anybody to entertain as long as the people like it. It's customer care preaching. So don't talk about sin because you're going to offend some people. Even I've seen pastors starting to put on skirts and dresses. They are going to get there. You know, mm, you will know that. them by their fruit. Mm -hmm. There's no hiding. They're going to come out. And this is a time when God is going to separate the fake church from the real church. Absolutely. And the fake church will be seen physically. People are beginning to identify a pastor in a skirt. Oh, my God. Oh, surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. That was one. Noise and pestilence, that's two. Terror by night, that's three. Arrow that flies by day, those are bowmen that that uh, fire arrows, fly, fiery darts at people. Um, pestilence that walks in darkness, that's another spirit. That's the fifth kind. Now, this pestilence that walks in darkness, it brings pestilence. That's exactly what it does. It's described perfectly. He said, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. So there's an operation that reduces men to nothing under the glare of the sun. Remember that this world is filled with sun worshippers. Whether you're in the you know, the South American side of the world where the Aztecs were worshipping the sun god and come to the other side of the world on the continent of Africa where the Egyptians were worshipping the sun god or go to Greece and look at the Greek empire where the Greeks were worshipping the sun god Helios or come back over to the Roman empire after Greece fell and the Greeks were and the Romans were worshipping the same gods that the Greeks, Greeks were worshipping. The Romans would worship Sol Invictus, the sun god. The Greeks were worshipping Helios, the sun god, which they stole from Egypt. The Egyptians were worshipping the sun god, Horus. These are all various names of the same Antichrist, but it is the destruction that wastes at noonday. And who's destroyed? The human being is destroyed. The life is destroyed. The children are destroyed. In fact, during those um, empires, the the most destructive part was the destruction of children, the sacrifice of children, human sacrifice of innocence. Because when an innocent child is being sacrificed upon an altar, it releases the most potent power, according to the kingdom of darkness. It releases the most potent power. And so the life force of that child is now handed over to the kingdom of darkness. The Bible says that the life is in the blood. Yeah. So when the blood is shed, this demonic entity now has those that many years. Now remember that God reduced the amount of years that a human being will live yes. to 120 in, in Genesis chapter 6. He said, I shall not always strive with men. So his years will be 120. That's when he reduced the number of years. So the life force in a child is enough life force for 120 years. So... If the enemy steals that life force, he can use that energy 
to do a lot of destruction. So no they are so big on abortion and they have those abortion centers. Absolutely. Every Planned Parenthood clinic is an altar. And that altar is not no ordinary altar. Those are the altars of innocent children that are being sacrificed and offered to Moloch. Now Moloch was the god that accepts the 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 child the sacrifice of children. So that's the if you look at Moloch, it's a beast of a thing. It has the head of a of an ox and the body of a man. It's a morphed type of it's a it's a form of Satan, and Satan transforms into various forms. Remember that Satan was a cherub. A cherub has four faces. One, the face of a man, two, the face of a of an ox, three, the face of an eagle, and four, the face of a lion. So he can transform into any one of those. He can also transform into a dragon because he was a seraph. It, he was a unique kind of archangel that's a, com a combination between cherub or a seraph. So the seraphim are like dragons. They exist in the flames. The Bible says that Satan walked up and down in the midst of the coals of fire. That means he was among the seraphs. And the seraphs, they dwell, they live in the flames. And they protect with great zealous, they are zealous to protect the holiness of God. So this being has those four different faces. So when you're looking at him in the form of Moloch, you're looking at him in the form of the, the ox head or the, the head that looks like a bull. So they would offer their children to Moloch. And when they offer their children to Moloch, what does the Bible say about the ox? He said, where no oxen are, that's Proverbs chapter 14, verse 4, where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increases by the strength of the ox. So when they are worshiping Satan, when he's in the form of the ox, Moloch, they are doing so so that they can get much increase. It is a money ritual. It is a money sacrifice. It releases innocent blood and when blood is shed upon that altar of Moloch, a, a, a great amount of power is released and that power re results in them getting, he makes it rain money on them, put it that way. And the money floods, the money comes in. And that's why, you know, you can see the star of Moloch right there on the dollar bill inside, inside the sun disk above Horus's head on the dollar bill. You see the eagle, you see above it, there's the sun disk and you see inside the sun disk is the star of Moloch. And when they're offering their children, that's why they will, oh, they will fight. They will fight to prevent abortion from being stopped. It's not abortion. It's sacrifice unto Moloch. But you see, understanding that it's a sacrifice unto Moloch, that is being spiritually minded. Thinking that it's just an abortion and it's just women's health, that is being carnally my minded. My body, my choice. It's being carnally minded. Understanding that when you chose to sleep with a man and he put his seed inside you, it's not just your body anymore. You are in covenant. As far as the spirit realm is concerned, you're husband and wife, really. So you are covenanted together. You have to break that covenant with repentance and fasting and prayer. But you are covenanted together. And the seed that is inside you belongs to him. Actually, if, if you fornicate and she gets pregnant and she goes and offers that baby as a sacrifice the lord god will hold the both of you responsible yeah. it won't just be just you just the lady it will be the man and the woman because you're supposed to only have sex under the license of marriage under god so when they offer this child the innocent child unto moloch all kinds of power is released. So what you're fighting against when you're fighting against Planned Parenthood, you're not fighting against just, you know, a woman's right to choose. No, 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 no. You are fighting against the altar of Moloch. You are fighting against witches. You are fighting against the synagogue of Satan. And to date, if you just in America alone, if you look at the number of deaths from abortions, mm -hmm. over 70 million. Since Roe versus Wade, the court case that made it legal, to abort children, it's been over 70 million. Now it's it's past 100 million. So as those sacrifices continue, power, more power is released from hell. As more power is released from hell, society is going down. And that's why things that were impossible 20 years ago, today they are normal. A man demanding his right 
to be called a woman. A, a woman who's actually a man, a man dressed as a woman on the cover of GQ magazine, and they're calling that man woman of the year. There's a man dressed as a woman in the White House. And it's going further, it's going down. As more power is released, as the, as the blood of innocence is sacrificed, and as more power is released on those altars of darkness, that's why you should be offended every time you look at a dollar bill. And I'm not saying you should not have money or handle, or handle dollars or whatever, but if you look at the dollar bill, it is filled with diabolical sun worship diabolical child sacrifice and murder the pleasing of helios sacrificing unto moloch is offensive everything the whole dollar bill is an offensive hieroglyph filled with witchcraft and sorcery filled with devil worship it is a diabolical currency is dead is dead money and i'm not saying you shouldn't have money but i am telling you that it, they're showing you openly what they're doing so it's, it is very offensive. So the Lord will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Two, from the noise and pestilence. Three, you shall not be afraid for the terror by night. Four, nor for the arrow that flies by day. Five, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness. So you see there's one that functions by the noonday sun. There's another one that functions under cover of darkness. Five, uh, oh no, no, six, the destruction, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday under the glare of the noonday sun. The world worships the sun. The world worships and that, the, the, the created. And that's why Paul the Apostle was saying, was talking to the Romans in the book of Romans. He was talking to them about worshiping the created instead of worshiping the creator and that they will be condemned because they worship the created. And the sun is a created thing. They are and worshiping the, the sun and they the also moon. Worship the moon. They also worship the moon. Actually, you look at all of these superheroes. Where do they draw their power? If you look at Superman, he would fly. You look at they're telling Hollywood's telling the Hollywood understands these things. These those are witches and warlocks that write the scripts in these Hollywood movies. You're seeing Superman flying into the sun. Yeah. Is this this is sun worship? If you look in the book of Ezekiel, you find that. God took Ezekiel out of his body and brought him into the temple. And there, the priests of the Lord were betraying the Lord. They had turned their backs on the Lord and were facing east. And the Bible says they worshipped the sun toward the east. So I'm showing you that all on that dollar bill, you're seeing sun worship. And the sun worship is that's the worship of horrors, which which requires diabolical blood flow. The flow of blood is like a river. The blood has to keep flowing. That's why if you look at that, if you understand what the symbols on the dollar are, and it's this is not anti-American. The devil is not an American. So Lucifer is not an American. He's just taken some of some of the leaders that rule over that country and made them his servants, his slaves. And, ex and in exchange for money and power and success, they're willing to sell out humanity. Those people, are no, they're not even in the human family anymore. Because at, by the time you can cause wars and kill a million people for Moloch, what kind of person are you? By the time you can, you can kill a million Iraqis for Horus as a sacrifice unto Horus, what kind of person are you? You're not even human anymore. You lose your humanity. So, thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. Then he says, then he gives you the rewards. A thousand shall fall at your side. Ten thousand at your right hand. But it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. And you see that now... As a righteous one who trusts in the Lord, who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, with your eyes, you're seeing the reward of wickedness. Yes. And you're like, and you're even grateful to God. You're saying, oh, thank you, Father, that I'm saved. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. That could have been me, me. being sacrificed. Yeah, but we, we are not happy because the person is suffering. Of course not. But we are happy because God has saved I'm us. I'm just thankful that I'm like, oh, thank God. I don't know why he saved me, but wow, am I glad he did. Oh, he saved me because he loves me. But yeah. I thank God that he chose to love me because he said, I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy. In fact, he, he decided. 
there is a woman who went to my grandma. She wanted uh, to bewitch her husband to love her alone because they had suffered and now they were beginning to make progress. So she wanted the man to stick to her alone because when men, according to her, she says when men get money, they start looking for younger women mm -hmm. and then they forget us who have suffered. So I want you to help me make him stick to me. And here is my auntie who is attending to the altar and she's been single and she's found out that this guy in the neighborhood has money. So what they decided to do was to make this man important every time he goes to the woman, grandmother and my aunt. So whenever he goes to his wife, he would, he would not be normal. Like he would not function as a man. Then whenever he goes out, is functioning so that's how my auntie wanted to come in into the picture and take their money you know because mm. the man will be frustrated whenever he goes to the wife there's no union and then when he gets he goes out he he's he's a normal man so now when this woman found out that the person she trusted with her secret is actually interested in her man and uh, they, they also have diabolical powers she got saved and she went to church and confessed and started praying. And when they started praying, grandmother decided, okay, so you've started praying. I'm going to put a charm in your, at the door at night when they're sleeping because they were neighbors. So uh, I'll see how you successfully go to the, to the what? To the church again. My grandmother went with the charms. She planted at their entry. And she made declarations when they are sleeping, you know. Uh, God protects us in the night when our enemies are active. So my grandmother... After, while, while men slept. Yes. Mm. Yeah, so my grandmother plants the, the witchcraft and she accidentally... It's the woman who's supposed to jump that witchcraft. My grandmother forgot that she had planted it there and she jumped it herself. She came back and she started having issues with the leg. You know those people who serve the enemy suffer a lot. <laughs> <laughs> she bewitched herself this time. She, she, <laughs> By accident. She wished herself uh, uh, accidentally. <laughs> then she started calling her her neighbor her neighbor friend who was also very old, but a witch. The one they ran with mm. in the first documentary. I told you how they ran around the, the moon yeah. and then they disappeared. So she called that witch to also help her to and witch herself the so the, the, and bewitch herself <laughs> so the the woman was performing rituals on my grandmother and my grandmother was like ah this woman ah this woman <laughs> 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 so <laughs> people who doubt <laughs> prayer there's power in prayer a person can bewitch themselves thinking that they are bewitching you but god causes them to fall in their own trap they lay in their own, they lay traps and they fall in their own traps. So my grandmother had wished this woman's leg to swell. But now because they knew what kind of witchcraft they had used, the other witch, her friend, a fellow witch, mm. decided to come and they, they undid the witchcraft that my grandmother had done to herself. Wow. So you see you see why there's a constant flow that they, these witches, they need more power. Yeah. So no wonder there's a constant flow of abortions. They want to keep those that human sacrifice flowing to keep the, the river of blood flowing to Moloch so he can keep making it rain with money. And they'll use celebrities to advertise the lifestyle of sin. Yes. They become these ambassadors for the kingdom of darkness. They They might not even realize it, but they are literally emissaries that advertise uh, a dimension that is not in this world yeah. and they are advertising that lifestyle and as they advertise that millions of young little girls all over the world are copying them yes. they find themselves getting pregnant before they're ready and boom the constant flow of human sacrifice to Moloch continues and as iniquity continues the industry the industry the music industry and the entertainment industry this is the main this is the main advertising power of the kingdom of darkness they're utilizing this media system to keep the flow the 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 flow of blood the river of blood flowing endlessly so and as that river flows their power increases so if the kingdom of god 
does not expand, it will be to our detriment. You know, you understand that it's like we, you know, in 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 school we used to play with a certain toy called in the playground called the teeter totter. The teeter totter is a balance. It's a steel rod with chairs at the end of it on either yeah. end, and a child could sit on one side and yeah. balance on the other side. It's back and forth. Yeah. So, so it is in the kingdom of darkness against the kingdom of God. As the kingdom of darkness rises, the kingdom of God goes down. But as the kingdom of God rises, the kingdom of darkness goes down. And so it is in your own flesh, in your own body. As the flesh is glorified, the spirit man suffers. But as the spirit man is strengthened at the altar and at the, at the place of prayer, the flesh suffers. The flesh, actually the spirit man excels at the expense of the flesh. The flesh man excels at the expense of the spirit. And Paul said, oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of flesh? He said, but thanks be to God that causes us to triumph in Jesus Christ our Lord. So as you continue at the place called the altar, your fire is burning. Your spirit man is being strengthened. You should fast often. There should be no week where you don't fast. There should be no week where you don't do charity. Your spirit man is strengthened. And as it becomes stronger and stronger, it will become the new normal for your spirit man to rule over your physical man. As a result, verse 7, a thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Oh, there shall no evil befall you. Neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shall you trample under feet. And then the father begins to speak. He says, because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. A, Amen. With long life yes. will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. salvation. That's True. the altar of the Lord. That's True. the that's the altar of the that's the God we serve. Yeah, one time our grandmother had still visited us and uh, my dad my dad before he learned that life is spiritual, he was okay a christian but not very prayerful so he would take us to go and watch soccer and uh, he was a fan of the red devils so <laughs> so so we would go with our the dad. red devils is what manchester united yes so, so we <laughs> would go to watch the red devils uh, score uh. so now we left our my mom <laughs> <laughs> We left we left my mom <laughs> we left my mom she had just been operated and she 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 was very sick but because we needed to watch the red devils we left our mom in the in in in, in that condition with my grandmother and my grandmother wanted to use that as an opportunity to kill my mom but <clears throat> my mom remained in the bedroom praying while my grandmother was in the guest room so that night because my mom would not lock the door. She, when you've come from surgery, if you lock the door, it is risky. They can, they can knock and then you can't, you fail to open because of the back, the spinal cord. Eh? You know how they, they inject it. So my mom was in that condition. She could not move. So she left the door open with, without a lock. Anybody could access it. Mm. But she stayed on that bed praying, praying. She just felt in her spirit. She needs to pray and she doesn't know why. And God blinded my grandmother. My grandmother walked around the house looking for my mom's bedroom and she was bypassing it. <laughs> to the time we came back from supporting the Red Devils. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, I have failed to get to the room where Bena is. How did I miss that room? 
we found my mother on the bed praying you know so people who despise prayer they underestimate prayer they don't know the power that they have the church is powerful god has given us power over Satan. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall, shall not prevail, prevail against, against it. it. And, 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 and then you're crying that the enemy is torturing you. The enemy is taking advantage of your ignorance. And your prayerlessness. And your prayerlessness because you have no idea. It's like you have a gun but you don't know how to operate it. <laughs> and your enemy comes, he knows how to operate the gun, so he will take advantage of the fact that you no, don't know how no. to use that gun. And no, 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 he, he comes and starts insulting your gun. He starts <laughs> telling you that your gun is a useless weapon. And you look at the gun, you say, you know what? It is useless. <laughs> and you yes. turn on the TV and start watching movies uh, yeah. instead of using that gun to open fire. Yeah, at the enemy. So it's even possible for the enemy to grab that same gun from you and use it against you because you don't know how to operate it. If your enemy has some muscles, they can twist your arm and take that gun from your hand. But if you know how to operate the gun, then the enemy cannot have any access to your life. So that is the way we are as Christians. If you don't know how to pray and how to apply the word of God to your life, and all you know is to put it to put the Bible under the pillow at night and sleep, the enemy will take advantage of you as you put your head on top of the Bible. He will start strangling you on that same <laughs> on that same pillow when the mm. Bible is under your pillow. It, as long as it is not in your spirit, it's like you have the weapon, but you don't know how to use it. So he will take advantage of your ignorance. That's why the Bible says that you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free, free from your enemy, free from his oppression, free from his works, his devices, his lies he cannot lie to you anymore he cannot take advantage of you anymore he cannot oppress you anymore because now you know who you are in christ you can use that knowledge that you have against him you can call up you know if you know the bible says those that call upon the name of the lord shall be saved you can call upon the name of the lord had i known that before the enemy had trapped me if i had found myself before Satan, i would have called upon the name of the lord jesus and i would have been delivered immediately but because i was ignorant i had no idea of who i was in christ i all i knew was the god of my mom sunday school we have to go to church on sunday i had no personal relationship with god that's why the enemy took advantage of me people ask me you came from a christian family why did the enemy take advantage of you the enemy took advantage of my ignorance I didn't know who I was in Christ and I had no personal relationship with Jesus. I was a church goer, church attendant, like many Christians. I was just attending church because I was born in a Christian family and that was the routine. We have to go to church on Sunday in a very good dress and very good pair of shoes. So that's what I knew to do and I would go to church on Sunday. That's when you get your decent dress and your decent trouser and whatever you have that is decent and go to church. But I was not going there because I was in a relationship with God. I was going there to attend because it was an occasion that we attend every Sunday. And being in that state is very dangerous because the enemy takes advantage of people like that. You know, like me, he took advantage of me and I found myself, you know, in a dangerous position. Now he was using me against the church against the church members, against the pastors, against ministries, because he knew I was ignorant. I didn't know who I was in Christ. Yet God had destined me to win souls. When Satan got hold of me, he said, I got you because of your talent and also because you are a soul winner. If I don't get you now, you're going to terrorize my kingdom. So I have gotten you to to win souls for my kingdom, not for the other kingdom. And today I thank God that we are winning souls for the kingdom by his grace. This is something that the enemy did not want me to do. He hated it. But now I'm doing exactly what the, de the devil did not want me to do. So every each and every one of you has a purpose. There is a reason as to why God has called you. You have a destiny. There is something that God has 
placed in you that the enemy cannot stand. He is not fighting you because you have done something or because uh, maybe, you know, he's fighting you because he knows who you are. And he knows that you haven't yet discovered who you are. So he's taking advantage of you. It's like waking up one day and then you find out that you're the daughter to the president. And all along, you've been suffering, begging for everything, literally. And then somebody whispers to you that actually the president is your dad. Your mother, your mother was in a relationship with your dad before she died, and 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 and, and they, they had a misunderstanding. That's how she left. So she died, but your dad, actually, your dad was also looking for you, and your dad is president. So and so, you would immediately wake up. Something in you realizes that you're not supposed to be where you are. You say, "No, I'm not supposed to be here." I'm supposed to be in state house. You start even looking at yourself differently. You start picturing yourself in a different place, not in the slum anymore. You start picturing yourself in the in state house, meeting with big guys, important guys. In other words, your mind, your reasoning capacity changes. You start looking at yourself as a king. Yes. And that's what Revelation chapter 1 says, that Jesus Christ has made us... The Bible says in verse 6, Revelation 1, 6, and has made us kings and priests unto God yeah. and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Yeah. So he has made us kings. Now, as a king, you have to begin researching. When you realize, okay, I'm a king, but how do I take my place upon my throne? Then you begin to research how to have dominion. Actually, the Bible should be called Dominion 101. It should be called how to have dominion. It should be it should be called how to take your position of power. It should it should have a name like you know what I mean. Well, the Bible is okay, but Bible just means collection of uh, script or co- collection of uh, scrolls. So, has made us kings and priests, and there are things that kings do. Mm-hmm. The Bible says it is the glory of God to conceal a thing. But the honor of kings is to search out a matter. So it's the glory of God to conceal the things that make you a king, like altars, like covenants, like the realization of the spirituality of life, like priesthood. It is the honor, it is the glory of God to conceal that knowledge, but it is the honor of kings to search out a matter. And the Bible also says in Proverbs chapter 16, it says, It is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness, for the throne is established in righteousness. Yes. So you understand that your throne as a king is only established in righteousness. So if Jezebel will try to do anything, Jezebel will topple you from your throne of righteousness yeah. so that you bow down to her feet in fornication, in pornography, in masturbation, in immorality, in mm-hmm. sin, so that she can put a demon in your throne which will steal all of the blessings that God has for you. Yeah. There are other c- attributes of the king. Mm. The Bible says that uh, that the righteous considers the cause of the poor, but the wicked regard not to know it. Yeah. And if the throne is established in righteousness, then there are character traits that the righteous man must have. Yes. You must alleviate the suffering of those who are suffering. Yeah. The Bible says, the king that faithfully judges the poor, his throne shall be established forever. I read that. I couldn't believe it. I was shocked. The king that faithfully judges the poor, his throne shall be established forever. Yeah. Exactly. So if we are kings and priests, there are things that we must know in order to take that throne. Yeah. Like when you find out that your dad is the president of a certain country. There's a way you carry yourself. You start researching on your dad, that country, mm-hmm. how how they behave in that place. Your dad is tribe. You, you, you want to identify with them. You want to know who they are. You want to be like them. You want to fit in. You want your dad to know that you're still alive. You want to claim everything that belongs to you. You start disconnecting from some friends, those who discourage you from bathing and cleaning up. And now you start realizing who you are. You start, your esteem 
increases mm. you you start speaking like like an heir to the throne like the child of the president you stop speaking like a timid person in the slum who has no future you start you start making big promises you start believing that you you even promise your friends to help them i'll help you once i get to once start, i get to you know the promised land i will help you you start talking differently you start, you start talking you start big communicating big you start yeah. talking big and that's how we should live as Christians because that is who we are we are children of God he said as many has received him and to them he gave them the power to become the sons and daughters of God yes. so he has given us the power to be sons and daughters we are daughters and sons of the most high can you imagine how and, big we are and roman says that all of creation is waiting for the manifestation of these sons that means all of creation that fell when adam fell creation also fell the hot sun was not always so hostile against a human being it was not always it would not always burn you right now if you stand under the sun for hours you stand there two three days in the desert that sun can kill you yeah but it was not always like that before mm -hmm. adam fell the sun was subject unto adam yeah. And the moon also. That's why we have to understand creation. He said, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. That's over all the spirits that operated the marine kingdom. Over the fowl of the air. That's over the spirits that operate in the air. Over the beasts of the field. And over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And we know that the sun and moon are living things. Yeah. Remember Joshua in Joshua chapter 10. He said, son, stand thou still in Gibeon. And moon, stand still in the valley of Ajalon. He commanded them to stand still and they heard and they obeyed. That means if they can hear, mm -hmm. they can obey, they must be alive. Yeah, I was casting out devils when I was newly delivered. That's that that actually that has always been my area of interest. That should I be the to, area of interest of every believer. Enemy. I want to terrorize the enemy the way he terrorized me. Jesus said, cast me. out devils, heal yeah. the sick, raise the dead. That's so everybody should be doing that. Yeah, so as I was casting out devils from, from a certain lady. The eyes rolled and she stood and she was huge. And she said, even you, Erica, you're casting us out, yet you were working with us. Who are you? I said, I am the daughter of the Most High. Before, I didn't know who I was. When I served with you, oh, I served you. I but slaved. But today... I command you to get out as the daughter of the Most High. I command you to get out in Jesus' name. The way the lady was looking, I thought she was coming after me. I just saw her going down slowly, slowly, slowly. I was like, hey, it worked. <laughs> so <laughs> that boosted my my faith and I ran because I ran towards her. When I was saying I'm the daughter of the Most High, one leg was facing the, the opposite direction. <laughs> in <laughs> case she comes <laughs> and the, the other leg was facing her but i said let me exercise my power let me let me tell this enemy who i am because before he was intimidating me i was ignorant now i know who i am i am the daughter of the of the most high and i take authority over you i command you to get out of this place because we cannot be in the same place anymore not anymore and the demons left the girl. I continued praying for her until she got fully delivered. And that encouraged me to continue casting out devils and and, 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 and desiring to know God more. Because I felt, yeah, hey, you mean I can cast out these demons that were tormenting me? Satan, you know, when I was a slave, I thought they were powerful. But after knowing the truth, I was set free. The way I started seeing myself changed. Mm -hmm. The way I started picturing life changed. I now started speaking to situations, you know. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's not by my own strength, not by power, not by might, but by the spirit. You know, I started realizing that, wow, there is, there is power that we have. But unless we know that we have that power, the enemy keeps 
playing with our lives. He keeps disorganizing us. He keeps terrorizing us because we don't know that we are powerful. You start moving from one man of God to another man of God to the other man of God, yet you have the power right in your hands to cast mm. out that demon from your daughter. Then you start selling your vehicles, selling your business, selling everything to give a man of God so that your child can be delivered. Yet you yourself can command the devil to get out of your child. But the reason as to why you think you have to be laid hands on is because you have not yet known who you are in Christ. But the moment you know that you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you, you get annoyed with the enemy and you say, now enough is enough. This is where we draw the line. We are divorcing right now. No more sleeping on me every night. Your spiritual ha husband, whatever you call yourself, you have no power over this body. It's a temple of the Holy Spirit. And I'm a mm -hmm. daughter of the Most High. And greater is he that is in me than the devil that is in the world. You start declaring the word of God and applying it to your life. And I'm assuring you, once you know that you are the altar, the enemy cannot mess with your life. There is a, a witch doctor known as Balaam who was hired to go and bewitch the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And he went, instead of bewitching them, he blessed them. <laughs> yes. He blessed them instead of bewitching them because he could not find any loophole. Yes, and now they story. started planning on how they can successfully bewitch them because all the attempts he had made to cast them he ended up blessing them. You cannot curse a person that God has blessed. And there was no legal entry for the enemy to access them. So they went and strategized on how to access the children of Israel. And what hurt me is the children of Israel didn't know who they were. So they fell for the trap of the enemy. And they ended up getting cursed because they fell for the trap of the enemy. And that is how many Christians end up because they don't know. They just take the grace and the favor and the provision and the protection God has given them for granted. So they don't know that they, whatever they have, they are, not, uh, they are not putting in a lot of strength to achieve because God has already done it for them. So they are living by the grace of God. They are surviving by the... Their children are graduating by the grace of God. They don't know that the enemy... Whatever they are achieving, there's somebody who's sacrificing somebody to get a business. Somebody is killing their mother to build a home. Somebody is, is slaughtering their, their firstborn to have vehicles or to have businesses. But they are just getting everything by the grace of God, you know. So they take those things for granted. They don't see the reason of, of, uh, of having intimacy with God. They know that every time we ask, he provides. It's like every time Zoe comes to me, I want bread, I give. I want milk, I give. I want, I, I, I want juice, I'll give. But the day I say no, she'll throw herself down and start crying and screaming and rolling on the ground. That is how many Christians are. Whenever they go to God and he gives them, they are happy. The day God says no, wait. They are not patient enough to wait. They'll start grumbling. They'll start uh, entering into depression. They start going they, to shrines to look for power. They start threatening the pastor that they are going to backslide if God does not come through for them. They start doing all sorts of gimmicks. And now that's how the enemy takes advantage of them. But there are some things we ask God for and he sees that those things, yes, we don't need them. They are going to destroy us. He doesn't give us. When he sees that what we are asking for is, is going to help us, you know, is going to build our, our, our strength and our relationship with him, he will provide. But there are some things he knows because he looks at the state of our heart. He knows that this one is asking me for the car, but if I give her the car, it will be full of girlfriends. He's not yet ready to accommodate this. Oh, you're asking for a vehicle, he'll see that now he's a married man, he's responsible, he has ministry, he needs it, so he will give it to you. But there are some things that we prayed for before we were serious in our salvation and we never got. And there are some things that we just got giving us even without praying for them because he sees that we are capable of maintaining them. Yeah, so that, that man called Balaam, I think you can, you can expound on him. Yes, in Numbers 24, mm. when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, 
He went not as at other times to seek for enchantments, but he set his face towards the wilderness. Now you need some context here so that you understand what was going on between Balak, the, the king of Moab, and Balaam, who was a seer or a prophet. He was supposed to be a prophet unto the Lord. So at that time, Balaam was the most talented of them, of the seers. So what Balak, the king, did is he sent for Balaam so that he can curse the children of Israel because Balaam, Balak could see that the children of Israel were in their camps and they were so numerous and they were blessed. And he could see that they were powerful. And he had heard about what the children of Israel had done when they came out from Egypt. They destroyed all of their enemies. Wherever they went, the children of Israel won. So by now, Balak was terrified of the children of Israel. So before he could attack, before he could send in his army, he asked Balaam to curse them first. So Balaam would always was, was saying, basically, bring seven bullocks. Let's sacrifice them upon the hill. And what the Lord shall say, that is what I will give you as an answer. So from verse 1, Numbers 24. So the strategy is to curse the children of Israel. Yeah. Balak wants to curse them before he can invade, which is the same strategy that Satan has against you. Yeah. He needs you to be cursed before he can invade. So when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he went not, as at other times, to seek for enchantments, which is witchcraft, divination. But he set his face toward the wilderness. And Balaam lifted up his eyes, and he saw Israel abiding in his tents according to their tribes. And the Spirit of God came upon him. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam, the son of Beor, has said, And the man whose eyes are open has said, he had said, which heard the words of God, which saw the vision of the Almighty, falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. How goodly are thy tents, O Jacob, and thy tabernacles, O Israel. You see, now he's blessing them. Yeah. As the valleys are, they spread forth as gardens by the riverside, as the trees of line aloes, which the Lord has planted, and as cedar trees beside the waters. Remember in uh, documentary 32, I was talking about the cedar trees of Lebanon. When they grow to be 120 feet tall, it's because their roots are a hundred, oh no, 300 feet deep into the ground. So, and as cedar trees beside the waters, he shall pour the water out of his buckets, and his seed shall be in many waters, and his king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. God brought him forth out of Egypt. He has, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. He shall eat up the nations his enemies, and shall break their bones, and pierce them through with his arrows. He couched, he lay down as a lion, and as a great lion, who shall stir him up? Blessed is he that blesseth thee, and cursed is he that curseth thee. So he spoke that blessing upon the children of Israel in front of Balak, in yes. Balak's face. I'm telling you, if you'll serve the Lord, the witches will bless yes. you in the devil's face. I ended up talking to the mm -hmm. pastor that I had gone to attack, and he was even asking me, so whose daughter are you? And I even told him my mom's name. I told him we, we spoke. We, we, I didn't know that I was under the power of the altar. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> you see, and Balak, that. now in verse 10, and Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam, and he smote his hands together. And Balak said unto Balaam, I called you to curse my enemies, and behold, you have altogether blessed them these three times. Therefore now flee thou to thy, to thy place. I thought to promote thee unto great honor, but lo, the Lord has kept you back from honor. And Balaam said unto Balak, Spake I not also to thy messengers, which you sent unto me, saying, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of the Lord to do either good or bad of mine own mind. But what the Lord says, that will I speak. And now, behold, I go unto my people. Come, therefore, I will advertise thee what this people shall do to thy people in the latter days. And he took up his parable, and he said, Balaam, 
The son of Beor has said, and the man whose eyes are open has said, he has said, which heard the words of God, and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty, falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. I shall see him, but not how, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob. He speaks of Jesus. You see what Balaam is prophesying? There shall come a star out of Jacob. And a scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and shall destroy and destroy all the children of Sheth. And Edom shall be a possession. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies. And Israel shall do valiantly. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion and shall destroy him that remains of the city. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable, etc., etc. He kept on prophesying. But the prophecy was about the coming of the Lord Jesus, Jesus, the destruction of the kingdom of darkness, really. And so you see how Balaam later on began to advise uh, the king of Moab. Yes. If you want to bring down the children of Israel, yeah. send the whores from your people, mm -hmm. the prostitutes from among Moab, and send the daughters that are fornicators into the camp of the children of Israel. Send the fornicating women among their men and let them be defiled. And as defilement continues, then you can send the curse because the Lord will have beheld defilement in the kingdom amongst the children of Israel right. and yeah. he will have seen perversion among his people. Yeah. And once the Lord sees that, it's over. Yes, because he's holy. He can't be where sin is. That, and that's that's, that's the same the strategy that Satan has for you, for me, for, or anybody. for anybody. As long as the Lord sees perversion, as long as the Lord sees defilement, the enemy can send his forces and make merchandise of you. Mm -hmm. But that shall not be your portion. In Jesus. That shall not be our portion. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. So, um, if 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 you've been taking your prayer life lightly, if you've been thinking that this salvation thing is just something, you know, you you anybody can easily. By the way, salvation is a gift. Oh, I appreciate the treasure. fact that I am born again. Because there is a time where I longed. I told you in my documentary, I moved from church to church seeking for deliverance. And I could not find it. So you got saved by the grace of God. You know, you did not have to go through the pain and the hardship that I went through to obtain this salvation that I have. But just know that I treasure this salvation because I did not get it cheap. There's a price that that was paid. And Jesus, I know Jesus shed his blood for me on the cross. And that's the reason as to why I'm delivered. But also to get this salvation, I did not get it cheaply. I had, I had to go through so much, you know, because of the covenants that were on my life and the level of initiation I had been in. I don't take this salvation for granted. And anything to escape hell i would do i don't want to find myself in hell when i get time i'll explain to you what hell is like anybody who says go to hell is your number one enemy mm -hmm. anybody who wishes hell even for their enemy is their number one or their worst enemy anybody who says even if it's in a joking way i i, I would hold you at heart i would be like ah, ah this person does not wish me well this person this person desires that I go to hell of all places. There are people in hell who wish they can come out. They and can be right. given a second chance to live right. But it is too late. And I don't wish it for anybody. That's the reason as to why we sit here or every time. By the way, I'm supposed to be on, on, uh, on bed rest because I, I just gave birth on 16th. God blessed us with a wonderful son. His name is Zephaniah. Um, I'm so glad. I'm so humbled. It was on the 16th of of January that I got this wonderful son, and uh, by then I had I had already recorded the documentary on 14th. 
So I recorded a documentary on 14th and on 16th I had my baby. So I have not rested. Why? Because I know we rest the day he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Mm -hmm. Before you hear that voice, you don't have to rest. Let us work for the kingdom. Let us, we, we, we want to be crowned. We want God to give us that rest, the, the rest where we are sitting with the, with, the, with the people that we have been reading about in the Bible. We, want, we, we, we desire to be there and, and interact with them and talk to Abraham and talk to David and talk to Adam and talk to them. You know, we want to be there. And that's the reason as to why we are not resting. He's supposed to be holding his baby right now. I'm supposed to be, you know, also with the family, but... We have decided to put all that aside and to come here and tell you that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. No man goes to the Father except through him. And you can be given that opportunity today. It's the best decision you can ever make in life. So we can lead you to Jesus. Amen. So if you would like to give your life to Christ, yeah. this is your opportunity. If you would like to rededicate your life to Christ, it's also the same. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I've heard your word. I've heard your word. I heard that Jesus I heard is that Jesus is your only begotten Son. Your only begotten and Son. And that you sent Him. And that you sent Him die for me. To die for me on an altar called Calvary. On an altar called Calvary. May that altar speak for me. May that altar speak for me. And I heard that you raised Him from the dead. I heard that you raised Him from the dead on the third day. On the third day. Please write my name in the book of life. Please write my name in the book of life. Blot out my name from the book of death. Blot out my name from the book of death. Make me a new creature. Make me a new creature. Make me a child of God. Make me a child of God. And a son. And a son. Show me show how me. you show me how you operate, Father. Show me how you operate, Father. That I may operate like you. That I may operate like you. That I may be like Jesus. That I may be like Jesus. Give me Christian friends. Give me Christian friends. Who are strong in the Lord. Who are strong in the Lord. Show me where I can be baptized. Show me where I can be baptized. And filled with the Holy Ghost. And filled with the Holy Ghost. And I will live for you. And I will live for you. From now on. From now on. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Um, so let me pray for people. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for those souls who have just given their lives to Christ. I pray that you would lead them, guide them into the right place to grow, where they can grow as quickly as possible. I pray that the strategy of the devil to drive them among false prophets may fail. Father, rescue them from the sea of false prophets that are out there. Rescue them from false doctrine. Rescue them also from fake friends, from false friends. For any friend that pulls you away from Jesus is no friend at all. So I pray for them, Father, that you will deliver them from every strategy of the kingdom of darkness. Deliver them and everyone under the sound of my voice from the strategies of witchcraft. Deliver them from sorcery. Deliver them from the altars of darkness. We speak words against the kingdom of darkness. We speak words against those altars that have held God's people in bondage, whether it be rejection, whether it be pornography, addiction, masturbation, immorality, adultery, whether it be poverty, whether it be lies and deceit, whether it be a life of affliction or even depression, whatever the case may be, we bind every demonic operation that is at work against God's people right now and we render them powerless. We render those evil spirits powerless and we speak power and life and hope and edification to God's children. And as those altars of the darkness, of the kingdom of darkness, are crushed, may every evil spirit that has been sent from those altars be bound in the name of Jesus. Father, your word says, It's not my word like as a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rocks in pieces. Let the fire of the Lord destroy those evil spirits and destroy those altars and consume every evil word that has been spoken in enchantments. 
every evil word that was spoken by witches or by evil warlocks or by wicked men, every evil word or every evil charm that was buried in the ground, in the village, in the city, in outside of people's doors, in homes, wherever evil charms have been buried, may fire seek it out, the fire of the Holy Ghost, seek it out and destroy it and annihilate it. May the fires of the word of God, the fires of the Lord Jesus Christ, destroy witchcraft, sorcery, abominations, spells, and charms. May the strategy of the kingdom of darkness be destroyed. May his hold over the minds of God's children be destroyed in Jesus' name. I pray for children of parents who love the Lord, but the children are rebellious. I pray, mighty Father, that the realities of this existence may begin to dawn on them, that they may begin to realize that life is indeed spiritual, that, that they may have encounters, encounters with spirits, encounters with heaven and hell. And by the time they come back to their bodies, they are more dedicated to Jesus than their parents. These things are possible because with God, nothing shall be impossible. We thank you for their conversion. We thank you for their salvation. Finally, Lord, we speak a blessing over God's children. May the Lord shine upon them. May he gaze upon them. May he lift up his countenance upon them and give them great peace. We pray these things believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Yes, I love you, but Jesus loves you more. I remain Erika Mukisa Kimani, a.k.a. Mama Maisha, O Mami Zion, and Zef. Amen. Amen. And now, unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and honor and power and majesty from now, henceforth, and forever. Amen. Amen. Remember, life is spiritual. Yes. Erica, part five, altars and covenants. Breaking generational curses and destroying the power of witchcraft. This is the fifth installment of the Erica Testimonial book series. Erica reveals how the enemy takes advantage of altars and covenants, details of how these covenants affected her and her family, and how she and her family were totally set free by the power of Jesus. Get your copy of Altars and Covenants now. Visit lifeisspiritual.org.